This guy is a point producer through and through at every level. He was the leading scorer in the BCHL this year with the Penticton Vs. It's Bradley Nadeau. Bradley Nadeau of the BCHL. It's Ross, the BCHL is really on the rise lately. They've had some huge high draft picks come out of there, but it's very interesting for me because I have a really hard time judging BCHL prospects on a competition scale appropriately because, I mean, you look at uh, Bradley Nando's uh, scoring here and he made a joke in this league. Like, let's just be honest. In 54 games, 45 goals, 68 assists, 113 points in 54 games, and he kept the party going in the playoffs with 35 points in 17 playoff games. Yeah, if you're wondering, he did win playoffs MVP with those numbers. <laughs> yeah, real surprise there. Yeah, shocker. Um, he, he's over there. He's a New Brunswick kid playing in the BCHL. Which is so strange to me because, like, what a move to make. Like, now, if he was going to the WHL or something like that, I I guess that makes sense. But he would probably have to go to the Q if he's a New Brunswick guy. So I'd like to find out more about him and his brother going from uh, East Coast to West Coast. Yeah, well, right. His older brother is the reason why he followed him there. And he's 19 years old, was passed over in the draft. Two-time BCHL champion, though, with the Penticton Vs and He also had quite a season with 110 points as well. So probably pretty cool for them to play together, right? And guess what? Same line even. Guess what? What? That's going to continue. They're both going to the University of Maine next season as well. So uh, a family affair, and they'll be a lot closer to home there. Maine is about directly south from New Brunswick. Bradley Nadeau is a center I think he'll be a winger at the next level, though. 5'10", 161 pounds. We already went through the point total, so let's go through the rankings. Oh, wait, he's 5'10 with a ton of skill. Of course, Scott Wheeler has him high on his list, has him at 22 listed, whereas everyone else is a second-round talent for him. Elite Prospects at 35, Chris Peters at 39, Corey Pronman at 36, and Craig Button the lowest at 46 on his list. This guy is a project. I think he'll be in the NHL in about five years, maybe even six, but the patience could pay off because he dazzles offensively. He, he even and even though he's listed at five ten, like from the highlights I watched, like I don't know if it's because the BCHL, but you wouldn't think that different leagues, different heights per se. But he he looks big out there to me. So I didn't think that the size was much of an issue at, at the level he was at. Yeah, and that's that's the thing. It's tough to judge with the BCHL. Uh, I feel like most of the the bigger players that are at that age level go to the dump. So. It's it's tough. I'd, I'd love to hear more from uh, different scouts how they how they judge that. Uh, we'll definitely get into that in our mock draft discussions, I'm sure. But for Nadeau Ross, like this kid has a heavy shot. Like he loads up top shelf wristers. He's got a booming one timer. EP awarded him with the fourth best shot in this draft. So regardless of what league he's playing in, the shot is there and that shot is going to be effective. So I, I wouldn't be surprised, Ross, if we see him put up, um, you know, Cy Young type numbers, uh, goals versus assists when he gets to the University of Maine. Like I can see him putting up double digit goals uh, first year right uh, heading into college. The only players that Elite Prospect says have a better shot than Nadeau. In this Wait, can I try to get them? Yeah. Okay. Connor Bedard. Number one. Colby Barlow. Number five, so below Nadeau. Wow, that's surprising for me. Uh, Braden Yeager. Nope. Ooh. Okay, I'm stumped. I thought for sure those those would be the three ahead of him. Are you sure you don't want to take another guess at number two and three? Is Fantilli up there? Fantilli's number two. Okay, so and then judging by your tone, I'm going to say Leo Carlson was also there. No. Matt Vemichkov. Ah, uh, yeah, I should have got Mitch Coffey. for them. And guess who they have shades of for Bradley Nadeau at Elite Prospects Draft Guide? I think it's Mike Hoffman, right? It's Mike Hoffman. Yeah, that's that's interesting. Ridiculous one timer on him. Decent playmaking, but at the level he's at, it's ridiculously talented. Obviously, look at the point totals. But I want to see next season. It's a real shame that. You can't see him play a year at Maine before drafting him, right? Because it, it is tough to judge with these guys. Because sometimes, like Kyle Turris, for example, it's way back when, but he was a top five pick out of the BCHL. So it's like, okay, you know the skill is evident. It's going to translate. Whereas when you're looking at a second, third round pick, 
Look at Johnny Tyconic. Perfect example. The Ottawa Senators took Johnny Tyconic in the middle of the second round out of Penticton. And then he went to college and it just didn't translate at all at North Dakota. He ends up playing five years at college, has to transfer out of North Dakota. Now he's an ECHL all-star or superstar in the playoffs, you could say. But that's the thing. You're taking such a gamble when you're seeing these guys do whatever they want on the ice. Like they, they make yeah. it look easy at that level. But frankly, it's never going to be that easy for them again once they step foot in college hockey. Now, Ross, I'll reference, and maybe this isn't the best example, but uh, a guy that always comes to mind for me when you're th- talking about first-round talent drafted out of the BCHL is Alex Newhook. And uh, f- funny enough, uh, Newhook, that's an East Coast guy that went to play in the BCHL as well. So that's interesting. So Newhook was drafted 16th overall by the Avalanche in 2019. He dominated in the BCHL uh, with the Victoria Grizzlies, 102 points. And then he went to Boston College, And he was able to put up 42 points in 34 games. So the transition wasn't too difficult for him. Now, probably Boston College, he's got a little bit more support and better teammates than um, Bradley Nadeau will have at Maine. I'm sure that's probably a fair statement. But you can still take a look. At least there's one player that was able to make that transition uh, not too hard. To me, this screams early second round pick by a team that has multiple firsts. Okay, and you're like you're insulating him in your prospect pool, where you're almost just like putting him in the freezer, and it's like, yeah, he'll eat one day, but right now we're just gonna let him like like chill out, do your thing, develop as you will, and it'll be all good. Like I look at San Jose as as a perfect spot for him. They've got the the fourth overall pick. They've got a pick late in the first round where I think you take another swing, and then this is like the big swing where it's like. It's all good. He's the third guy we're picking. It's almost like the Senators taking Roby Arventi. They knew that they had a bunch of firsts. They knew they wouldn't have to rush him. And now it's slow and steady, but the potential is still there. The potential for Bradley Nadeau is still going to be there in three years. I'm sure of it. He's mm-hmm. too talented that he won't have pro potential. But a team's going to have to – they're going to have to buckle up if if they're expecting him to, uh, to jump into the NHL in a couple of years. This guy, he's a project, but he's one that – the reward could be a 25, 30 goal scorer at the national hockey league level who you can have on a first power play unit. Like that's the upside for a kid like this. Yep. I agree. Uh, I, I got similar notes to you. My one note is uh, I'm going to reserve my full Pillsy stamp of judgment till I see him at university of Maine. Obviously NHL teams don't have that luxury. I was going to say, imagine a scout could do that. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, and then my, my next comment uh, on my final notes are he's going to be the first player selected in the second round. Doesn't he make sense for the Anaheim Ducks? Yes. Like that's a really good, or wait, are they the, yeah, yeah, they are the first. So I really see him going to the Anaheim Ducks. That would be cool. So I'm going to call San Jose as mine. Like, like I like it. Oh no. The Winnipeg ice are sold. They're moving to Washington. that's neither here nor there there. but uh bradley nadeau so i won't get to see zach benson anymore that sucks uh bradley nadeau uh is i think a guy who you're you're going to be excited to see highlights of every every weekend when he plays at university of maine next year but for the reasons of the length of time until we see him as an nhler and the risk that maybe the 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 game won't be as easy at the next level. I think that's why we have him here at number 31 on our locked on senators draft rankings for more prospect profiles. Make sure you head on over to locked on senators on YouTube and download the podcast wherever you get yours. 